hi everyone and thank you for being here with me to learn together about yeah can you hear me we can hear you but we couldn't see you yes that's all mm -hmm. ah because i shared the the presentation we got it we got it okay okay, okay. so yeah thank you for being today with me to learn together about uh, regular expression in R. So if we, uh, we saw together before about API and it intermediate API, and now, you know, when you have like two parts API, uh, the result of the API's regular expression are really helpful. uh actually i like like this didactic thing that alison horst has and uh, this is to explain the importance of a uh, regular expression or regex or regex uh, to like uh, find and match and manipulate uh, text data they are widely used in uh, text processing when you have to manipulate strings and uh, supported by many programming languages such as R. Uh, so what are regular expression or what is a uh, regular expression? So they consist of a combination of letters, digits and special characters that define the search criteria. So what we have to do is like uh, put like, uh, a combination yeah it's like of digits of letter to get you know like a pattern and from that it describes a set of string used uh, using a concise and flexible syntax and uh, we will see together this syntax and how you know using this syntax we can get the like result we are expecting so i think in english it's pronounced regex is that right regex yeah. I would okay. say regex. Regex? I've heard regex. Regex. Okay. okay. So, yeah, when I started working uh, like in the bioinformatics, okay. sorry. You just like reggae, the music. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, is it regex or regex? Uh, anyway, regex. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> or regular expression <laughs> so yeah so uh, today we'll see together you know it's like uh, how uh, using the syntax to get the result that we want to get you know from like string data so here i show like uh, the anchors that match a position before or after other characters so this is very like the the hat so when you use the hat what does it mean it match a start of a line so for example here the example i won't go like through all of them because we won't be using all of these uh, regular expression but the most important ones okay so we see here it's like when we use the hat with the pattern so we can get this kind of examples and we will see that in the practical part with the r studio the dollar also is very important to match the end of the line then here you can match the start of the line and using this also syntax it match end of the line and then we will go to see the matching types of character the dot is also very very important when it's like we want to uh, get anything except uh, a line break then uh, this we will be using this in the practical part which match uh, digit and then well uh, this doesn't uh, it match a non-digit so when you want to get like a non-digit you have to use this syntax And then uh, I think you're going a bit too fast, but the people get it. Okay, so yeah, that's good. Uh, so but you might want to ask a question, Heidi, to someone at random, right? Or yeah, actually, 
it's this is only you know it's like to understand but with the practical part we will put an example and we will go through all these parts you know it's like it's only you know to understand together the uh, like uh, regular expression now so the and to understand that when we want to get like um, a match for a start of the line we have to use a heart when we want to match the end of the line we have to use a dollar these are very important and when we want to get anything except a line break we use the dot so and these are all these are all exact matches then uh, which one these characters are all for exact matches for these things actually not exact because when you use the dot it means anything you know any character you you have to use you know for example this example okay we have clean we put c dot e you can get zero to more character and here you know the clean can be clean or cheap so it matches or clean or cheap it's not zero it has to be at least one when you just put it like that yeah actually when you put the dot with the star it will be like zero to more when you put the dot it can be one or more than uh yeah it's like one or more characters you have a question on the chat too oh, okay sorry i don't see the chat that's why you should open it if you present it remotely here okay so what about uh using zero nine okay Zero nine is same as using this syntax, so it match a GG. Okay, so uh, using zero nine, it will be using as uh, it will be as matching a GG, and uh, we will see uh, all this in the practical part. This is a refresher, but we will go again through all of this point by point with example in the practical part. Okay, yeah, so you can use, uh, as I said, zero nine or this. And then to make it easy, I won't yeah, go through, but yeah, I will go through the one we will be using. So it's like this one, it much like word character. So once you use this one, it can match, for example, uh, three or B, you use the yeah, slash w so it can be three or b you know in this example and then backslash s match a white space so uh, when you have like a white space you can use for example here we have a white space we can use a backslash s is it clear or Actually, you will understand better with a practical example, and we will go, yeah, it's like, this is only to, so when we start a practical example, you won't get lost, but feel free to ask questions, please. Okay. So uh, character classes, character classes are sets or ranges of character. So if you use here, it's like this syntax, it means that it match several characters. So here you can use like bracket EA, it can be, you know, it will match gray or gray. So uh, it won't match green or Greek because here you specify like only E or A, okay? But this is also much a range of characters. So if you use this syntax, but uh, you have, yeah, it's like, uh, this is mostly used when you have like, for example, in a bioinformatics sequence, you have A, T, G, T, and then you want to match, for example, G, C. So you can use this kind of pattern. But as I said, it will be good to see all that with a good example. And then from this part of repetition, because many times when we have a repetition, 
So to match that, we use this kind of uh, syntax. So if we want to, for example, uh, to match uh, digit repeated like three times, we can use like two and this like um, kind of uh, yeah syntax. So it's like here, you will get like the two repeated three times. You have to use this syntax. We will be using yeah all these syntax. It's like when we will have too much. Yeah, it's like practical example. And then when you want to match between, for example, two or five times or one or three times, like in this example, so this syntax is uh, very helpful. Okay, I will start here yeah, from scratch when building a practical example. And then, so when you have like a pattern, you want, for example, you have Mississippi, and then you want to capture this pattern. So you have like a parentheses, you put like this pattern to get, for example, Miss or Mississippi. Okay. And what is also very helpful is, uh, for example, this or to match like uh, several alternative pattern. So here we are saying we want re or ba. This is like to say or when we have like two options or when it starts, for example, red or ray or red or bed. So here you put like re or b when you want like too much like red or let's say bed. Okay. Can Is there any words? question? Yeah. <clears throat> yes. Please go ahead. I had a question on the second from the top. Create a group without capturing. You you didn't go over that one. What is that? Yeah, actually, I didn't. Uh, I put lots of like uh, uh, regular expression. I didn't. I won't go uh, through all of them because in the like uh, practical exercise, I won't be using this one. Okay, so that's why. Yeah, but this is like uh, to uh, have a group to not capture, for example. Uh, the how to say so here you want you don't want to capture a b but you want to capture c g okay so you have to use uh, this kind of syntax but since in the practical like example i won't be you using sorry all of them so that's why i didn't explain this uh, example uh. I, I was curious because the grouping thing is something I do in Python, but I don't know how to do it in R where I want to match, say, the, extract the brain number from a tech, a string of the file name when yes. I'm loading it in. So if, uh, if that's doable in R, that would be very interesting. But that's like a... Yeah, it's case. doable in R and we will see in the last part of the practical, I will give you an exercise and you will see how to do that in R, okay? It's like, yeah, how like uh, matching the group. And I will go also through a uh, look ahead so uh, this look ahead and uh, so they are very, very useful and you can specify like a specific character that must appear before or after uh, your match without including those character in the match. This is, uh, we will have a yeah, practical example also with a positive uh, look ahead. It's not easy to explain it like that, but once you will get like a practical example, you will understand it better, okay? And then this is to say that when you use like backslash word, it's uh, the same as using this digit, it's the same as using backslash G, which means the same. 
same as using gets, like the word includes the alphanumeric, the alpha, the uppercase, the lowercase, and the digit. And then you have the punctuation when you have like yeah, too much punctuation and the space. In the space, you can use like space or backslash S. Okay, you have also blank and new line. This is a little summary about like a regular expression. And only many of you, I'm sure, are very familiar with a regular expression in, in base R. And this is only to say that in Tajiverse, I use mostly uh, Tajiverse. So there is a package called a string R. And uh, this uh, package uh, is, has lots of function uh, to manipulate string data. So such as string, string detect, string count, string locate, string extract, string match, and string split. All the like functions starting with str and uh, how to call this one. Um, it's like, uh, so these are for manipulating uh, string data. And I like, I said that I like also this very easy didactic way of like making things easy to understand from Alison Horst and this like to say that, uh, for example, this string detect. So what it does, it's detect the absence or presence of a pattern in a string. I will show also, I will then explain. It's the same as using grep in base R. And I will show also how easy to uh, use these string R functions. And finally, if you hate, Regular expression, you're not the only one <laughs> because regular expressions sometimes could be a headache. So learning about them and learning how using them is really helpful uh, in many fields such as also bioinformatics. And we will go through like a practical example to see how we can use the regular expression to get, for example, IGs and as you say, as uh, many of you, yeah, it's like, uh, so I'm, I'm sure many of you had like many issues, like from like FASTA file to get IDs or to manipulate FASTA file or any other of bioinformatics file. So let's start with a practical example and we will go step-by-step step from scratch. So, and you can ask questions and see how helpful are a regular expression. So I will be switching to my R studio and we will start with these practical examples. Now, let me share my R studio. Okay. So are you seeing my R studio now? Yes. Okay, so let's practice all what I said with a very easy practical example. So let's create a character vo vector words. And in these character vectors, so we will have bioinformatics, mathematics, biology, chemistry, and computer science. Well, since many of you are coming from bioinformatics, so I put like that, yeah, biology, mathematics, because yeah, these are part of bioinformatics. And let's say we want to get to search for all the elements that contain the letter A. So what we will be doing is grab A from the character vector words. So you will ask me, what does the grep function do? So the grep function is used to search for patterns in a character vector. Okay, let's see together what the grep fun function returns. 
So when I sorry, I didn't. Double quote? Ah, yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. It's a double quote here. Yeah. Because it's a character. So it's not. So what we will get is this result. What does it mean? There was an A in words one and two. Okay, so this it's one and two. So what grep gives you is the indices. So grep returns the indices of the elements that contain the pattern, which is the letter A. It means that in bioinformatics, we see that there's the character A and in mathematics, we see that there is a character A. But in biology, chemistry, computer science, there is no A here. That's why you get here the indices. So it's like bioinformatics and mathematics contain the letter A. Okay? Is it clear? Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> let's go to see how, for example, you have a character vector which is this one. Well, for many people, mathematics is very difficult and uh, mathematics is not easy for biologists to understand, okay? And then now what we want to do is replace the word mathematics with bioinformatics. Which function should we use for that? Okay, there are two very useful functions in base R, which are sub, which means substitute. And these functions are used to replace a pattern in a string with another pattern. We said that we want to replace mathematics with bioinformatics. So let's replace here mathematics with bioinformatics using the substitute function. Let's see what's the result. So we see that the mathematics was replaced with uh, bioinformatics. Let's it does, use- It does it one time then? Let's use the other function. I will respond, yeah, it's a very good question. Uh, let's use the G sub uh, function and let's see what's the difference between the G sub and the uh, substitute, like the sub uh, function, okay? So let's do the same using the G sub function. And you will tell me what's the difference between both of these functions. It was a good guess, Ryan, so. Here you see like the difference between them. So here we substituted mathematics with bioinformatics, but only the first occurrence of mathematics with bioinformatics. Here with the GSAP, we replaced all the occurrences of the word uh, mathematics with bioinformatics. So this is to respond to your question. Okay. I have a, a question. Yeah, go ahead. So G sub, maybe that's considered global sub, but why is why is it called G grip? And then what what the, that's question one. The other question is what is the practical difference between G grip versus G grip L? Hmm. Uh, that's a good question. Uh, actually, grep for me, what I understood. The L, the L which just makes it logical. Instead of returning a numeric vector or an integer vector with uh, positions, um, where you have the match, it returns a true false logical vector that has the same length as the original um, object. So in this case, word, words. 
Okay. You grab L A words. Will be a longer vector than the current one. So can you just copy paste line two and then an L? Yeah, I will do that here, and we'll see also the I sorry here grab L. So, so it I, gives I, you. Yeah, I prefer this version than the other one, because uh, uh, at that point you you get a vector that has the same length as the original object. And so, for example, later on, you, you want to, you, maybe you want to do things with the truths for something and the false with something else. So you can do like the um, exclamation point to negate that logical vector. Um, and if you really want to get um, the integer vector, you could do which around that. Uh, so you get like the more na naive form that could, uh, from which you can build more pieces on top. Okay. Oh, like I, I, there's a handful of other of these uh, regress functions that also have the L version. Is there is, is there like a list, or is it just grip L? Uh, sorry, can you repeat the question? So like every once in a while, I'm converting a Python script to an R script. And I know that there's these, so I always forget which one is logical and which one returns you the index. And I was wondering if there were other of these regress uh, 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 functions that return logical by just putting the L. Because like, if I can remember, oh, you just put an L on the function and then you get the logical instead of index. Right. That's easier than trying to remember which one is which. Yeah, with the index, that's true. That, that's one of the criticisms of base R for these type of functions, that you can't just find them easily, right? Like we, like in, with, this, with string R, like all of them start with str, right? Yeah, that's um, true. Here, like <laughs> every function can have a very completely different spelling. The order of the arguments can also change across the functions. Um, so it's not consistent. Um, so uh, that's a long way to say, like, I don't know the answer to your question. No, thank you. I felt like I was going crazy because I would then just switch to string, the uh, string R, because it was like more straightforward and the documentation is good. But like, I felt like there should have been a way to do it and for me to do it in base but it, it was like taking longer than i wanted but okay thank you i just yeah i think what you're probably looking for is a r e g e x p r function one of those mm -hmm. those i think can return a list um where like the length the length of the list is equal to the number of elements that you're searching elements. okay um but that will give you the I think that will give you like the exact positions of where the mesh is. So for example, for bioinformatics, that's the one, two, three, four. That's the 10th uh, character in bioinformatics for the A, right? Stuff like that. Um, so it's, it's like it's different types of functions. Uh, actually, I personally uh, use mostly string R function. That's why. So here, yeah, to present like the base R function, but I personally find very practical use, yeah, the string R like package. Okay, so let's move on to when we want like, for example, to search for all elements that contain Mathematics, or let's say uh, bioinformatics. Uh, or, um, sorry, let's, yeah, let's go to see another example, which is replacing all the occurrences of is with a capital is using the G sub like a uh, function. So what it does here, as we see, it replaces all the is 
with a capital is like so mathematics is in all the occurrences you know of the character vector and now let's say that we want, for example, to use um, or and this kind of syntax, so which means that we want to search for all the elements that contain mathematics or biologists where in this words vector. Okay. Oh, sorry. It's text. Oh, it's text. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. It, in this text vector. Okay. So we see here, it gives us the index where it's like we have mathematics or uh, biologists. Okay, let's move on with the fun part, which I like, which is using the string R uh, library. Okay, so in this part, we will see a very useful function, which is str subset. And let's see what str subset will return when we do the same thing. But you have really to be careful because the syntax is not the same. So we have here to put the vector and then we have to put the pattern. So what does the str subset give us? So what does it do? What's the function? Actually, the str subset is equivalent to the grep function. So if you see it, it gives almost the same result so here I put the text and what it, go, it gives us like the str subset give returns all the element of the string where there is at least one match to the pattern. So we have here the pattern and what we get is at least the element of the string where there's at least one match. So we see it's like, Okay, we want mathematics or biologists. And here we have mathematics. So what we will get, yeah, it's like these elements because it have at least one match from like this uh, text, like a uh, character vector. Is it clear? Or let's see it with a very, with a better example. Well, there is no better example, but we will be using something we saw before. So let's say from this like word character vector, we want to get the elements which start with B. So you will help me writing this pattern. So we said from the words character vector, okay, we want to get the elements that start with the character B. We said that to say that it has to start with which syntax we have to use. The hat. Okay, the hat and the word. The yeah. Well done. So what we will get here? Oh, at least one piece. Yeah. So we got bioinformatics and biology. Okay, let's do more exercises. And 
let's say I want to get the elements of this vector, but that n with, let's say, so to say and with what should we use? Let's see people in the chat. Go, go. What should we be used here to say that it should end with? I'm sure every one of you knows that. Okay, let's see the chat. Yeah. Rene, KJ, I will answer your question later. Uh, so, okay, good. Rene, good answer. Then, Ryan, Cynthia. So we have to use, oh, why well, it's not working here. something very useful, which is a dollar. Okay. So here we want to get uh, the, yeah. So we said the words that end with S. So, which are the like words that end with S here? Bioinformatics and mathematics. Okay. Hey, yeah. Yeah. Are, are these all um, case sensitive then? Yeah. Yes. 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 So, how if, do you, can you make them non case sensitive then? Actually, to use like not case sensitive, well, you can, but in general, not in this case. For example, you can use this kind for capital, and then you use the, I'm oh, sorry. I think this kind, and I think there is another one, if I'm not mistaken, like this one. Or you can use word. That's just for letters in general, right? Yeah. Here yeah, you yeah. wanted little s, yeah. capital yeah. s. You can because, do or here you can put, you know, it's like you want uh, like small b, or you can use, yeah, it's like there are many ways of doing that, or capital B. You know, it's like you, there are, yeah, many ways of doing it. You know, not making it, yeah, it's like case sensitive. You could also use a two upper function or two lower function. You want to make everything lowercase or uppercase. Yeah. You you can point, use this, or you can use point, you know, it's like, it means that any character it can be, yeah. So there are many combinations that uh, you can do. And in case, for example, you say you don't want the B here, the negation will be using the hat. I use this when I uh, like for bioinformatic data. And let's say you don't, for example, bioinformatic string to contain GC. So you use this kind of pattern. So in the pattern, you use, yeah, like this kind of pattern. These are, you know, it's like when you uh, program with Perl, it's like, uh, yeah, people programming with Perl use lots of regular expression. I had, yeah, it's like a Perl module and we use, yeah, lots of regular expression. So is it clear? Everything good? Okay, so. It, it looked like when you were hovering over the, cause you're in our studio, you hovered over the function. Yeah. There is an innate uh, um, argument for negating so you can get the opposite. Okay. You just have to say true to get negation. 
Oh, okay. So if you That's... put it in there, it's it's automatically false. You can try it again with the B biology one, and then just say negate. So negate. Okay, yeah. that's good to know. Equals true or capital T. Okay. Oh, nice. Thank you. I didn't know about that. I didn't know either, so I just saw it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, let's move on with like uh, bioinformatic examples. And so let's use the library BioStrings. Actually, I wanted to give this like RStat Club because I'm not an expert in regular expressions. So you can, you know, it's like, let me understand better regular expression. So I can get yeah better at using regular expression because every time I have to use regular expression, I have to go and browse and have to look and which one yeah I have to use. It's true that I know some regular expression, but I'm not an expert, okay? So it's very good to know new things when... Okay, so let's create this, the DNA string set, okay? So we have this sequence. I think I have, oh my God, it's, I have to rush a little bit because I want you to go to the last example and we still very, very, yeah. So maybe to only show you, maybe I will go to show you, um, I think it's better, yeah, if I go to the, directly to the example of COVID because we don't have much time. So let me go to the COVID example. And I think yeah, it will be more helpful for you so you can understand like a regular expression. Okay, so let's say that you're a bioinformatician and then you know it's like that, like uh, the genome of uh, SARS-CoV-2 to was sequenced and you want you know to uh, study the different genomes and proteomes of uh, SARS-CoV-2 which causes COVID-19. And one very useful uh, library which is an API wrapper around the NCBI database is this uh, Runtree's uh, library. From these land, land trees, you can get, you know, it's like all the databases. So once you go here and you put entries databases, you can, yeah, it's like see all the databases that are included and that, par and that are part of the NCBI, okay? So now uh, let's say you want to get the, 31st records of, uh, you know, it's like um, uh, COVID-19. Uh, in the library you have, it's like when you go and you see, so the scientific name, it's called Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2. And then you want to get the nucleotide sequence, the sequence of the nucleotide from the database, okay? So here you go to this like new core database, the term COVID, and then you want like the first 30 records from the nucleotide database, okay? So you get a match here. Okay, what? You, you want to count, let's say, how many entries you will get. And you will see that you have so many entries and so many sequences of the COVID-19, okay? So now you want to, you want to get you know, the IDs of these uh, sequences. 
So to get the IDs, what you use, you, you use uh, entries fetch. Actually in this COVID nuke, if you go and you put dollar, you will get the IDs. You will get all the 30, we said like first records of the uh, COVID-19, okay? And then you want to get the FASTA of these IDs. Okay, the FASTA file. So you use this entries fetch. You put the database, you put the IDs, and then retype FASTA. Okay, and you will be getting the FASTA of this. To have a look at this, because there is like a new line and lots of that you can't look at it like that. So you have to use a separator. And so when we look at this, we will get this kind, you know, it's like of FASTA file. And let's say what we want is to get this kind of ID. Okay. So this is like a real problem. You're a bioinformatician, you have to get the IG identifier, you know, of the nucleotide sequences from the NCBI. To work with, you know, this in R, so what we will do is we have to write, you know, them to a temporary file and then read that file. Otherwise, it's not easy for us to read this file of like COVID nuke. I know that I'm going fast, but if you have any question, please don't hesitate to ask me questions. It's only because we are don't have enough time. Okay, so to read this FASTA format, we need this function, which is read DNA string set. Okay. And what we will get from here is This uh, FASTA, I'm sorry, I didn't. The library bio strings. You're missing an R in putting in your line. For the Y. Sorry? You're missing an R before the Y on 921. That's why it's not auto completing. Uh, okay. On you, line 21. Ah. Is You're it... missing the R before the Y, yeah. 21. You got it. You found it. Yeah. It's okay. capital B with bias strings. Okay. Capital B. Yeah, yeah. Bio strings. Yeah. Okay. So we get one moment. Okay. Temporary. Sorry. So here we have the nuke, here we have the COVID N, okay? And then here we have the temporary file, COVID N, okay? And then we have here to write it to temporary file, okay? And then here, what we do is okay, it's missing this because it's like we are creating the temporary file, but we are not saying to write yeah the COVID N into the temporary file. So now it's I'm oh, sorry, it should work. I don't know. 
Okay. And then, so what we will do is to get the head of these sequences. And we will see that we have all these sequences. And from here, we want to get this kind of ID. So you will help me writing the regular expression for that, because now you're expert. And you will see, you will give me, you can give me one solution. I'm not very, you know, like from names, you will give me the solution you will find easier. Okay. Since the, the first characters are the same. Okay. So you say that here, if you go, you will see that the length is the same. I, and the length is the same, but also the first character, the first five characters are the same. Looks okay. like. Okay. And then? And then uh, um, an open. Actually, the easiest way of doing it is three digits oh, after three digits and yeah, a fix is saying when you know it starts the easiest way of doing it. You see, okay, this is the same length. Okay, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you will tell R, okay, I want to get from each. From one to 10, it will give you 10. And then give me those. Okay. It's the easiest way. As a bioinformatician, if you don't want, yeah, it's like to bother yourself. Okay, you count, same length. So you tell him, I want to get from one to 10. And that's the easiest way, I sorry, of doing it. Then is something. Names. Maybe you need like a dot or something. Ah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Actually, I didn't put any character here. That's a good mistake. Okay, tell me what's the mistake here. Nick, he told you already. Ah, okay. Yeah, he told me what. You can use a dot, or you could use maybe like alphanumeric if you're trying to match. Just yeah. To make it easier, you only told him I want this, but you didn't specify. It's like repeated one to ten times. But so here it's like you have to put like any character, yeah, as Nick said, or Alpha. Or you can, yeah, we will show the example because if you want like to specify, you can put word or you can put, for example, alpha, gg, punctuation, and you can get yeah, those results. And you will get here, you know, it's like the IG you're looking for. But since here we are uh, learning and we want to improve ourselves in regular expression, we will make it like more difficult. Let's say like a headache, but it's not a headache. We learn about alpha, alphanumeric. We have OKU, so it starts with OKU is alphanumeric. So we will tell them, I want alphanumeric, how many times? Here, how many times this alphanumeric, this? Eight, I guess, yeah. It's... I know we could theoretically do this, but this seems really difficult. Wouldn't it be better no. to do a partial it's... match instead of counting? It's like, we know we're it's, just trying to get a specific sequence with and actually yeah you have extract. a specific sequence what i do is like counting okay i have here two letters or you can put here like okay it's it's okay you know it, it doesn't matter and then you know you have to put digit how many digits do you have you can you have six digits okay and then, so you said, okay, I have six digit, I have punctuation, I have, you know, these kind of things. But how would we do it if we, all, if like, say it's not perfect, say some of them are 10, some of them are nine, but all of them st start with OQ. 
how will we do it from there? Like a partial match. Yeah, yeah that, think, that's how I, I like think, to um, You wanted to do all of that. You would just search for anything before the first space. Yeah. Actually, you, yeah. It doesn't matter the yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like, want, yeah, I would pretty much want to search for anything before the first space. You want everything before the first. Yeah, space. that's a very good question. You know why? Because I show you something that is really helpful and you, you will be using it now, which is a positive look ahead. So you, it's very good. You said, I want. Okay. We're running out of time, Hedia. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. It's only to show, yeah, show the answer to it. Yeah, this response. Only this yeah. one. So the way of doing it is using, uh, as I said, look ahead. So you will be doing, okay, I want to extract from this. And what you will be using is this kind of uh, sentence. So, and I will explain it. So here, what you want, what you're saying is that I want a positive look ahead that matches a space. Here we use a space. We use two backslash because you but, have- But I want just the first space because you know yeah. severe. But what if you don't yeah. know severe? We just know the okay. first space. So here it's the first space. And yes. here you have severe. And but what, severe. what if we don't know that? But just using this first space, is it? Do you know how to do that without using severe? Uh, actually, I didn't try it because, yeah, I I I tried with the look ahead using space. What about severe. look behind? Uh, I didn't I try. Madhur says that. On yeah, the chat. with the look behind. But uh, when I tried with the look ahead, because I said, okay, there is space, there is severe. So let me use that and I, I don't want yeah to get those and get only this kind of like pattern. And when using this look ahead, you will get, you know, it's like these uh, IGs, okay? I didn't try it, yeah, with another like uh, look behind, but yeah, okay, I can have a look at that and yeah, and try it. And <laughs> send you the response because I, I'm sorry, I didn't try it. No, it's fine. Okay. Normally, you have to Google this stuff anyway. So it's like, when well, you're going to use it once every month, maybe. Yeah. So. <laughs> so here, only to explain that when using, yeah, it's like a, a positive look ahead. What you're saying is that, that you want to match a space character, follow it by the word like severe, but you don't want to include this in the match. So you don't want to include this. So what you will get is uh, this kind, yeah, it's like of uh, results, okay? I will stop sharing. Uh, I know, sorry, the time is, yeah. But then, yeah, it's like, I, I can have a look at the look behind and give you the solution next time, okay? Thank you, Hadia. Thank you, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.